Hello everyone! In this video I want to take a look at one of the more unique cards that have been revealed from Hearthstone's upcoming journey to Angoru expansion. And the card is the rogue legendary minion, Sherazin, Corpse Flower. It's a card that brings a whole new unique mechanic to Hearthstone, but is it any good? Let's find out. So Sherazin, Corpse Flower, is a 4 mana 5 tree minion that has a death rattle to go dormant and then play 4 cards in a turn to revive this minion. And what does go dormant mean? Go dormant mean that when Sherazin is killed, it is replaced by another card, another minion on the board, Sherazin Seed. However, this minion cannot be interacted with. It takes a minion spot on the board, but you cannot actually do anything with it, and it also cannot be removed in any way, not even with a twisting nether or other form of hard removal. Then, when you play four cards within a single turn, this minion is again replaced with the 5 tree Sherazin Corpse Flower. So, a pretty unique mechanism. Four cards per turn, difficult but not impossible for a rogue to pull off. Interesting. It's important to note though that Sherazin does not have charge. So, every time you revive Sherazin, well, you have this 5 tree minion on the board again, but you have to wait until your next turn in order to actually be able to attack with it. And it also has another weakness. It only has 3 health. And this means when you play Sherazin on curve, for example, on 4, that even a 2 drop is able to trade into that often. Many 2 drops have 3 attack, Sherazin has only 3 health. It's quite easy to remove. Compared to, for example, the current rogue stable 4 drop, which is rotating out, the Tomb Pillager. The Tomb Pillager boasts a 5 4 stat line, and that 4 health is a lot more difficult to remove than the 3 health of Sherazin. Obviously, if you're able to bring back Sherazin multiple times, the fact that it's somewhat simple to remove once is no longer that much of a downside. Because let's say you have Sherazin out three times, okay, it's easy to remove once, but if removing it three times is already costing the opponent quite a bit of resources. So Sherazin offers a high promise of value. Even if you bring it back once, you have spent four mana for a total of 10 six stats. Rogue deck can easily bring Sherazin back multiple times, a cycle heavy rogue deck. Especially if you get to play Sherazin out early, you might even be able to get it back like three times. And that's already quite a lot of value. However, there's still the problem also with Sherazin that it doesn't really help with rogues one of rogues main issues, which is aggro decks. And Sherazin is all value, and it also creates these tempo swings later in the game but not in the first few turns, where it's actually quite a huge tempo loss, because it's so easy to remove. There's also a downside to Sherazin being a legendary minion. That means that you can only run one of these in your deck. And that means that you cannot build your deck around Sherazin. There's just no way. Because Sherazin is better the earlier you're able to play it. If you find it at the bottom of your deck, it's almost worthless. It's really bad. It's unlike for, let's say, Maligos. You build a Maligos Rogue. You want to kill your opponent with that combo. You can cycle through your deck, cycle through your deck, even if you find Maligos as your last card. If you're still alive when you find it, you still have the chance to pull off the combo and win. If you find Shirazin as your last card, because each time you revive it you need to use four cards, you're not going to make it. You're not going to be able to revive. Maybe you can revive Sherazin once, and that's just about it. Because you have already spent all your cards. You cannot hold all your cards in your hand. So Sherazin is better the earlier you find it, and it's not something you can build your deck around. It is a support card. However, being a support card is somewhat of a theme of Rogue Legendaries as of late. When we take a look at, Xar look at Xaril, Poisoned Mind, when we take a look at Shaku, the Collector, Neither of these cards were something that you actually built your deck around. Both of them were cards that could do nice things, but they still played a support role in the deck. And that's similar to what Sherazin is able to do. 
It can play a good role, it can play, but it can only play a support role. It cannot be the centerpiece of the deck, because if you draw Sheras in quite late, you will not be able to gain that much value from it. I still expect there to be a good chance for Sheras in to see play. When we look at Rogue and the next standard rotation, Rogue is going to lose a lot. Rogue is going to lose the Tomb Pillager. Rogue is also going to lose the Azure Drake. And the more miracle variants of Rogue, they are going to lose the Conceal. So Rogue is tending to lose a lot. The more aggressive Rogue builds, like Water Rogue, they can shrug off these losses. They don't really lose that much. But all the more slower variants of Rogue are losing some really good key cards. And the slower variants of Rogue typically rely on being able to cycle a lot of cards with the gadgets and Auctioneer. I don't expect Sprint to make a comeback. I still see that Auctioneer is going to be the premium cycle option. And that typically means that you need to generate cheap spells. Without the Tomb Pillager, I expect Berkeley Bully to rise up and see a lot of play. Berkeley Bully replaces Tomb Pillager in functional way, but from the point of view of mana cost, it comes into the Azure Break slot. So what is rogue, a slower rogue deck going to play in the 4 mana slot? Currently there are not that many options. Now, if you're the more aggressive variant, you could play Shadow Sensei, but the slower rogue decks generally cannot. I mean, even if they're running Shaku, they would need to run a bunch of stealth minions for the Shadow Sensei to actually be worth it. A more aggressive rogue deck can pull that off because they're running Shaku, they're running Finja, they're running Silent Knight at the moment. So they are running multiple stealth minions so that 4-drop is actually good for them. But for the more slower variant, when you look at the current option pool, you can look at Violet Teacher, you can look at Xaril Poisoned Mind, you can look at Barnes, and you can look at Cherazin. And of these options, Sherazin is looking quite attractive. Uh, it's actually interesting to see whether Violet Teacher is going to make any sort of comeback. Violet Teacher has been pretty good against aggro traditionally, so it's still a relatively strong four drop. It just hasn't found much room contested by the Tomb Pillager. But now there might be more room in the four drop slot. On the other hand, the three legendaries offer quite some synergies together. Sherazin, Barnes, which can also create a copy of Sarazin, and Xeril, which is also not something bad to get, come out of Barnes. So there's quite a lot of synergy between those cards, but they share a common weakness that they are generally relatively weak play on four. Barnes is the strongest ones, but strongest one, but Xeril and Sherazin, both of them are quite easily removed if you play them on four. Nonetheless, in this type of support role, any Miracle Offshoot of Rogue deck could easily find a spot to play Sheras in. And then when they go for the cycle, when they go for Edwin Van Cleef play, or they go for that Gadget and Auctioneer draw, they can revive Sheras in a couple of times during the game and gain a bunch of value that way. Sheras in as a Death Rattle minion, uh, on a superficial level, it looks like it would be a great fit with Nazoth. But actually, I am not sure whether Saracen will see play in the Zoth decks. When you think about what you typically want to do when you're playing Nesot Rogue, you're playing slamming down that Nesot, you're shadow stepping it back, you're slamming it back, you're shadow stepping it back, you're generating these endless death rattle minion boards. And Sherazin is counterproductive to this goal. Because if you have revived Sherazin a couple of times before you play Nazoth, then you get a couple of more Sherazins. And then well, I assume the opponent is going to be able to clear at least the first Nazoth board, which will then leave you with a bunch of seeds, which you then need to revive. You can't just drop the Nazoth next turn again, or you can, but most of your board space is occupied. It becomes a bit clunky. In fact, it becomes clunky enough that it's also possible that if there is a Nesot deck with Sherazin in it, it will add up to a bit of a different strategy. It will try to revive Sherazin a couple of times possibly before even playing Nesot, 
and also try to conserve some resources so that it can revive Sherazin again after the Nezot turn. Perhaps even in a way that that kind of a deck would not want to shadow step Nezot, it would go with just one round of Nezot minions, resummons, and then rely on reviving that Sherazin. And then if it fails to draw Sherazin in the first place, then it can go with the shadow step play on Nezot. Something like that. But there is definitely some anti-synergy going on between Sherazin and Nezot, so it's not an automatic inclusion in a Nezot rogue. Generally, Sherazin can deliver the most value in a deck that is able to generate plenty of additional resources. When you think about rogue, a pilfer rogue archetype comes to mind. A uh, pilfer rogue is going to lose Burgle, Burgle is rotating out, but there are still plenty of cards that help you create additional resources and also play multiple cards per turn. I'm thinking about cards like Shrash Burglar, cards like Undercity Huckster, Shaku the Collector, then there's Journey Below, which can also give you additional copies of Sherazin, by the way. Then there's Shadow Step, Shadow Caster, which can also give you additional copies of Sherazin and Ethereal Peddler. So you could use Sherazin as part of your core strategy in this kind of a pilfer rogue, where you revive Sherazin multiple times because you generate so many resources. Ethereal Peddler helps you make those resources cheaper so that you can actually play that four cards in a turn. Uh, Shadowcaster can be used to create multiple copies of Sherazin, but you can still control it much better than you can with the Nezoth. Because with Nezot, it's so easy to get too many Sherazins and then too many seeds on the board. That kind of deck looks pretty interesting to me, and it also looks like it might be something that would be pretty fun to play. But it might also be pretty weak to aggro, so <clears throat> we'll see. It, does, it has these typical rogue weaknesses. Another possible rogue archetype that we could think about would be a quest rogue built around the caverns below, the rogue class quest in Journey to Angoro. And the caverns below requires you to play four minions with the same name, and then rewards you with Crystal Core, which is a spell, and after you play that all your minions become 5-5s. Five so in order to play four minions with the same name, you will have to rely on a copy and bounce mechanics a lot. And this is something that you can use and also to revive Sherazin. Sherazin is again not the main star of the deck, it's just someone who is also running, it's playing a side role here, a secondary role, but it can still be of significant threat as part of this deck. And one upside is that once you complete the quest, then Sherazin's own stat line will also become a 5-5, five five. and that 5 health is so much better than the 3, so Sherazin becomes a lot more viable threat at that point. So I would expect Sherazin to see play in quest rogue decks, if successful quest rogue decks are built. I'm going to take a look at the quest rogue archetype more in a different video, not on this one, but this is just some kind of a preliminary idea that Sherazin might also fit in there. The remaining rogue archetypes, aggro rogue, tempo rogue, water rogue, these kinds of decks those decks are not interested in Sherazin. Sherazin has no real place in them. Sherazin requires you to play those four cards in a turn in order to revive it. And these more aggressive rogue deck types, they don't go for that mass draw, they don't go for that mass cycle. They are going to run out of cards, actually, quite rapidly. Their, ha their hand size is small, it's, it's getting smaller and smaller. Uh, they simply do not have those resources they would need to play Sherazin. So Sherazin is not going to see playing those kinds of decks. Overall, Sherazin continues the tradition of rogue legendaries as of late. It's an interesting card. It's a little different card than anything else really. It might see play in multiple decks. Actually, most of the rogue legendaries as of late have seen play in quite a few decks here and there. But well, also a common feature of them has been that they have not been the centerpieces of those decks. They have been support pieces. Decks are not built around these legendaries. 
And that's actually makes crafting rogue legendaries sometimes a little bit painful. Because with many other legendaries, you craft this legendary and it's the centerpiece of your deck. Your deck is built around having this legendary. And rogue class legendaries as of late, they just are not working that way. They are support pieces. They're the Oscar winners of the best supporting actor. But they are not head headlining the movie. So they can still be a lot of fun. A lot of rogue enthusiasts will no doubt play with Sherazin. I think it looks very viable in any slower rogue decks. But it's not a card that you build your deck around. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.